We watch, we listen, and we remember. The past is already written. The ink is dry. They have no idea what's going to happen. Have you ever wondered if there is something after this? Do you believe in the concept of a collective consciousness? Are you open-minded enough to join us as we explore the possibility? If so, welcome to We Meals Ghost Adventures. Hello, welcome to my brand new show, We Neil's Ghost Adventures. Now, I know that some of my regular listeners will be a bit cynical because of my usual reckless approach to my programmes, and there's probably some others that think that this is just some kind of Halloween gimmick, but the truth is, my interest in this subject has actually been kindled by a, an actual gadget, a very specific device, and it, the device is called an Echovox. And it's Echovox 3.0, it's the software that I've actually used myself. It was, uh, it raised an eyebrow as soon as I first heard it. It was designed by a guy called Daniel Roberge from America as an echo chamber slash multi-reverb, like the exact sort of thing that I would use for my guitars or for my vocals as a, as a sound engineer and a producer. At some point though, in the development of this VST, He's encountered what we producers or sound engineers would affectionately call ghost voices. And I've put that in inverted commas. Right, they're the sort of annoying little blips and sounds that appear to bleed through reverb units and multi-effects. It usually causes us to have to run about changing leads and using double screened leads, sometimes oxygen free cable, uh, oxygen free cable just to sort of cut down on a lot of the interference that we pick up. In gigs and pubs and that, especially neon signs and all that kind of shit, all cause these kind of problems. Anything that causes a sort of electric static can be an absolute fucking nightmare when it comes to reverb chambers especially. And if it's running a delay, it doesn't just mean that you hear that noise once, it means that you hear it every single time the delay counters it, so it, it really is a complete fucking headache for a sound engineer. And I can only imagine that at some point, he was getting frustrated trying to dial these noises out because he would definitely have been treating them initially like unwanted interference. But at some point in the process, he obviously realised that the timing of the interference was a lot more than just a coincidence. This led the final ongoing developments to take a very different route than intended. He has now incorporated enormous sound banks right, containing fragments of words. Not complete words, all the little component parts. This device sweeps through the sound banks, allowing something to manipulate the component parts of the words, forming them into words. Now, development is ongoing, and Daniel cleverly recruits users of the device all over the world to give them feedback and to share their captures. This brings me to the point of the show. One of the folk that he's taken on board is a guy called Sean Simpson from Dundee, believe it or not, just along the road from the studio. Amazing coincidence. And uh, he's a director of a team called Spirit Vox Paranormal Dundee. And this show is basically dedicated to these guys and their research. I've done the show in two halves. For first half of the show is my actual interview with the uh, Spirit Vox Paranormal Dundee team. Sean Simpson, accompanied by Stephen Cowan and Daryl Thompson, came through here to the Blood Knot studio. And we actually did an Echo Vox session while we were here. I got a demonstration of the device itself. So the second half of the show is a completely unedited version of the Echo Vox session that we actually did here last Sunday. 
So just just before any of my cynics or any of my critics try to accuse me of generating some of the noises and some of the sounds, I'm going to put my hand on my heart and swear down there is absolutely no editing whatsoever on the second part of this show. The session is in complete real time. So I have five different capture waves of this as well that you can all run on a comparison test. If there are any cynics at all, they're more than welcome to come out to the studio and see what this stuff looks like as the single takes. You'll know that there's no editing done whatsoever, especially when you hear our bad language. <laughs> so, without me gassing on any, any further, this is what happened when we, Neil, met Spirit Vox Paranormal Dundee. How long have you been together as a team? Which has passed what four years now, isn't it? Yeah. As long as I did, yeah. yeah four and years. three years have been together that length of time, eh? There's five five one total. We also linked up with uh, another paranormal company in Dundee as well, other realm paranormal. And they are consistent of two psychic mediums as well. Right. So they come out with it as well now. Is that one of the last years it was on the No B F one. Ah, yeah. The folk actually phone you and ask you, I mean, do you ever get like hired to come and investigate for yeah. people or is it stuff that you do, you do these things off your own no, back? We, we didn't charge people. We didn't charge people. No, no, I didn't, I didn't mean that, but, but the people actually ask yeah. you to come out for your help. Yeah, well, can, definitely. Uh, it's no just like, can you fancy going and doing a wee, a wee experiment no, we in this get, place or that place? You, you pick the venues and go and we see We get messages all the time. Ah, you yeah. know, there's one, I mean, they got the stage, it was a person down in England was getting. Uh, interfered with like poltergeist activity right and she was sending me pictures and things like that and you know that when they send you these recordings you're sitting thinking to yourself you know i want to get down there and help you you know what i mean as much as you can but even the simplest center i mean i'm not a religious person myself no. but if you're saying to them you know try a prayer try something just get in your own headspace and just tell them look i don't want you here you know in a way you go mm -hmm. sometimes that does help sometimes it doesn't sometimes it infuriates them you know, there's actually mediums that I know that they get. I don't know. I mean, this is going back to like ghost, ghost adventures and that. I don't believe in anything such as demons. I believe there are spirits that are pissed off. Mm -hmm. You know, and they'll come back, and these mediums are actually getting their spirit guides are actually getting harassed. I'm actually dealing with one just now whose spirit guides getting harassed by this spirit that's coming to the house and is refusing to leave. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's crazy. You know. So you've never been asked to go on a, like an actual exorcism or anything no, like no. that? No, I've no, never no. actually done anything like that. Like to exercise a house as a person, so would, can, but like a cleansing yeah. would be what we'd call it. I've been out I'm in a bit pagan, again, I've, yeah. sort of, I've kind I've, of got... I've bit, been out on house cleansings with Evelyn and that. Evelyn, she, she deals with that kind of stuff, you know, using the sage and things like that. Like my brother's ex, when we went through to, was it Kirkcaldy? That's right, yeah. Helen's house. When she said that things were getting moved about the house and everything, and um, my niece we seen a, a man in her bedroom at the time and she was too scared to go into her bedroom. We went in and she said she's never had any bother since we went yeah. in. I mean, a lot of these times pe when people do see spirit, I mean, scares them. spirit are no intentionally trying to scare them. They're trying to let them know I'm here. I mean, some people are contacted us saying there's things getting thrown across the room. Yeah. You know, they're, they're hearing the door slamming, they can hear footsteps running back and forth. Now, spirit have no concept of understanding that they're giving somebody a flag. Sometimes it's a past relative, somebody who's passed away, he comes back, mm -hmm. and it's their way. If you can imagine, if you're on in the spirit world, well, the way I think in my head, is nobody can see you, no one can hear you. You can move things, so you're like, I'm, I'm moving this, I'm trying to get your attention to let you know that I'm here. Nine times out of ten, with the places we go, with everyone, that's what spirit are doing. It's a past memory who's went away, mm -hmm. you know, and has come back, and they're trying to say, I'm here, but then obviously, the person who's you know, I'm going through this is going, I've got someone here that's, yeah, you know, like is, is there's it? someone really negative here because of the I'm TV not shows. The devil at all, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's because of TV shows. TV shows put them across as, you know, the place is haunted, I mean, people, I mean, we're really scared and things like that. They all seem to play on the fact that they're that any of the spirits are stuck in some sort of a loop, like some traumatic thing that happened to them, and they're having to keep reliving the same traumatic I thing. I do believe. Well, that, that doesn't make them sentient, that doesn't make them want to no. communicate with you, that makes them like an echo, an effect. Do you know what I mean? So, I, I, I didn't, I, I'm not sure how to buy into that, but uh, that 
when, when they actually communicate back it's a completely different story altogether that means they're no stuck in a loop that that means that they are like actually trying to sort of like, 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 like almost aye sentient yeah. okay you know that like they've, there's a uh, They've they've not got an agenda. They're no they're no trapped in any way, shape, or form. If they're actually trying to communicate, it means that uh, they're, they're, there's a, there's a, a level of consciousness, Ken, which means that they're trying to interact, Ken, as opposed to just existing and you happen to actually see some sort of an echo or some sort of a mirage or whatever yeah. you want to call it. Well, you believe in that you could possibly pick up an attachment on some of your adventures. Okay, when you're out there, you're, yeah. and when you're in certain places, do you believe that, that, that there is such a thing as, as that you can take an attachment home with you, that you can well, have spirits right. that attach to you and, and then and like right. follow you home? And then uh, occurrences that you've had on site when you've been out there, you discover that they're, they're in your flat. Definitely. And you can bring stuff home with you, aye? No, do you think you maybe brought someone home with you for fucking Iraq then? Or were you, is it um, Afghanistan you were in? I was out in Iraq right. in 2005. Right. And, um, I don't know. I don't believe that I've took anything home except for like fucking. Well, I call them the demons in my head. That's different, though. Eh? And it's just ah. like I keep on going through the same things. Uh, what happened when I was out there? Like one of my mates, he was he was killed by a rotary bomb right in front of me when we were on patrol. We just left the camp and then, bang! This massive explosion goes off, and that was it. That keeps on playing in my head. At least you think it's, it's, it's affected you. It's made you a lot more sensitive to a lot of things. Since do you think I, that's I, why? I think I think so because obviously, like when when we go on our uh, ghost hunts and everything, as we call it, it always seems to be me. You know, it always yeah. seems that, to be that me. Would, that would put you in the class as a hyper sensitive. Yeah, is that right? Is that yeah. what that would be called? Sean says I'm more um, susceptible to them. Exactly. Yeah. They seem to they seem to hang around me. Yeah, sens- sensitive. Uh, they seem to uh, like to poke at us and touch us and everything. When we were at that, was it Dunnetter Castle? Dunnetter. Yeah. Outside Abroath. No, no. Dunnetter Castle. Uh, outside uh, Aberdeen. Yeah. Just outside. This is somewhere outside Stonehaven. Yeah. Stone Haven. Haven. Know exactly yeah. That, really, so. really beautiful castle. Eh? We were we were sitting in uh, in, the, in a cave, and I just I just seem to sit down and I had my hands on my head. And then next thing I know, I'm standing up at the entrance of the cave, and Sean's like, Are you "Okay." And I was like, "That was weird." You didn't care what was happening. Well, have you been a body experience, or just? But it was like it was like I was standing up, and it was like I was looking. It was because this cave was like a tunnel, and there was a gate at the other end. And it was like I could see people walking backwards and. Going down, going down yeah. the hill, we crates and everything. It's like I was able to see like, all like a really vivid daydream. Yeah, and and it was, I was like, ah, oh, because Sean was standing in the tunnel, and I was like, Sean, do you want to move out the way for the woman? And there was a woman standing in front of him. We are, we are crate, and she was like, and I was like, look, you want to move out the way? And Sean moved out the way, and she went, oh, and then walked past her, past her, past her. <laughs> and then she walked out, she walked out the cave, and then she, uh, and then I walked over to the cave to watch where she was going, and she was gone. I was like, what the fuck is going on here? What an amazing natural <laughs> mannerism to pick I up thought, on. So I again, thought, no, a, no a sort of a, a ghosty apparition. No, like, like a very was just normal kid. Even her, yeah. her reaction to him being in the way, the way she sort of tutted and shook her head as much to say, no manners. It was like she was Ken just going about her day-to-day business. And it was like he can... Um, when, the only way I could describe it is, when I was standing there, because after like, I'd, I'd woken up, with Sean and everything going like, oh, what's wrong with you, what's wrong with you? It's like I was seeing, it was like I was seeing all these people and everything, but I could see Sean and everything, but these other people were no as stand out as like what me and you and everything are, it was like they were a wee bit faded, like a wee bit misty, mm-hmm. and um, there was one guy that had come running down the, down the tunnel and he was saying, they're coming, they're coming, and he stood at the, the exit of the tunnel and they were like, oh, there they are, there and I went out and it was like there was a couple of boats doing it there, doing it at the bay. And I was like, ah, oh, what's that? And you were like, what are you on about? Because yeah, at this point we've seen Stephen. Stephen's just not Stephen anymore, you know, he's like, it's like zombified. Yeah, because you know, said my face had changed and yeah. everything as well, didn't it? Your whole expression, you looked like his face was collapsing, it just looked like 
Stephen's soul had been ripped out of him and somebody else has stood in his place, you know. So it, was was the stasis. Stasis. Yeah. it was the weirdest thing ever. I was shaking for about two days after it. I was like, I was emotionally drained. And it was the weirdest thing ever. And I was like, well, you've got to go back to that place because <laughs> something real yeah. here. Aye. It was like they were trying to tell me something. We get a lot of spirit doing that when we're, when we're on an echo box asking for help. And they keep on going on about the light. You know, they they want to go towards the light. You know, and you you're stuck in that position, like, you know, am I capable of putting you towards the light? You know, what does the light look like? I mean, obviously we can't see what they're seeing. Right. You know, so you're most of the times when you when you're trying to listen into the recording when you're doing it, and you're trying to help them in the process and do it, but are you helping them? You know, you see a lot of these people are doing. You know, I'm sending them into the light, and I, I'm doing this, and I'm doing that. But are you? Are you getting them to the? Are you getting them to the right place? Are, are, are you getting them to go to this light? Are you? That's you know, the kind of stuff that we can get with the conscience. You, know? <laughs> I, you wouldn't want to be selling them bad advice. Exactly. For sure. as important as you know? that. That's where you, I see where you use some the likes of Evelyn there as well. Though. Yeah, I mean Evelyn is an absolute brilliant medium. I mean I've never come across anybody. The and first is she from Dundee? She's from Dundee. Yeah. Is that the woman that used to do the tarot cards? Uh, Evelyn has her own church now. She started out about seven years ago. Uh, she's got her own church now, uh, the Voice of Spirit in Douglas. Uh, she might do. Yeah, I know I she. I know she, I know there, she does uh, angel cards. I think she did used to do tarot cards at one point. So the first time I met Evelyn, my missus was like up to me. We're going to go to a psychic supper. And I'm going, well, one of these spooky things, you know what I mean? So I ends up going in, and Char next thing I know, Charlene's getting, did it, is a, a break it down, the Psychic Supper is when you all go and they get a medium to one table. So you've got like five or six different tables, right? And you all get an individual reading. There's always mediums going, you know, doing a switch between the tables. I didn't, I didn't believe in anything like that, mediums and stuff like that. I was just like, you know, I'll go as more support, you know, Aye. I'll go along there. Not telling anybody, you know, that I'm de dealing with stuff like Danny testing out his technology and everything like that. This is where it gets got to be a bit weird. My missus gets told, oh, I can't get the two used to sit together, so you're going to have to go to that table, and Sean, you're going to have to go to this table. And I'm thinking to myself, Fuck, I'm split up from my missus, you know what I mean? I'm going to be sitting at a table with people I don't know. And I'm sitting there, and the first person to come to the table was Evelyn. She was the very first person, I never knew it at this point. And she's like, uh, uh, can I come to you? And I'm like, uh, you know, I'm just sceptical, you know, medium. She's going like, uh, um, I've got your grandfather here coming through. And I'm like, oh, here we go with the grandfather, you know, kind of capers. I can see the, the gentleman, he's got an army uniform on, you know, predating like World War One, World War Two. Um, his name's Leslie now. That's my great grandfather, right? So I'm like, okay, okay, okay. What was your first experience that made you want to take this like more seriously? What was it beyond wanting to just being interested in programmes and put it on the telly? There had to be something that happened that made you think. It was, I mean, when, Dan, when Danny asked me to test the software, I actually done it at the hotel that I was working for for my boss that I'm still with just now. What made Danny approach you? Because he's where, Chicago? Danny was originally in New New Jersey. Um, New Jersey, yes, that's right. And I think he moved to New Hampshire. I don't know where he is now. Right. He's in some place that's really sunny. I I mean, that, Chicago, Illinois, yeah. or something like that. He moved to he moved to to Chicago and he moved in with um, uh, the guy who does uh, Spirit Wave, um, Anthony. Is it Anthony Sanchez? That's he was it. actually a stagehand. Obviously, Danny we used to work as a stagehand. Right. And uh, he used to deal with all the sound audio and he, he plays guitar and drums and things like that. He's a bit like yourself, you know. And uh, Danny actually came out with this idea when he was homeless, actually living on the streets. <laughs> and uh, he made it by accident. That's, that's what Danny thinks. I mean, me, me personally, I think Spirit were helping him, pushing him into the direction he's going. And what did he start off with? Component parts for you, what, what, just guitar effects and shit? Because there's a lot of it. Like, he, he, a digital delay would pretty much can be the first place to start with. The delay chamber's definitely what, well, based on the boss one as well. Exactly. Same as the pedals that I use. Mm -hmm. He's got the new, with the new uh, 3.0 system, he's actually got the reverb, and I think that takes him back to his musical. Aye. You know, he's using all the different sounds and 
you know, things like that. You'll definitely hear more in the white noise with, oh, with reverb. Okay, and reverb starts to definitely. play tunes. You get you get hums and tunes yeah. and that all on itself. Uh, whatever the source sound is, it's the, the the trail that it gets. It's what happens on its exactly. on its uh, what you call its decay, not the sustain. Okay, but like uh, as the, as the reverb's decaying away, that's when you actually hear it as it's unwinding. And yeah. reverb's really really telling. It's one of these things where. You can't use reverb on a voice in a in, when you're recording a song to make it sound better because what reverb does is makes it makes turns it up all the warts and all. Up. I mean, it literally makes you hear yeah. everything, draws your attention to the the qualities of the sound that you didn't want to listen to in the overall mix. So, the uh, reverb's a pretty revealing one, yeah. and uh, I can see exactly how it works. But in the delay part, especially ingenious because. Any time you're watching, like I call them ghost plumbers. Yeah. <laughs> tabs, I'll be tabs. Honestly, they're really pissing me off. Just, what is the fucking point in them? Honestly, I just they're, they're not even debunkers. It's just, everything's yeah. fucking dust. You so, know what I mean? I, and I honestly think that they'll go back in six months' time and sort their fucking plumbing for them. And all they've been doing is just wreckies on the house. Yeah. They're going there and getting an estimate how much it would cost to change the fucking boiler. And they make that program as a sort of sidetrack. Exactly. You know, it's, I, I honestly don't see the point in them at all. I mean, from the loopholes on the internet, I mean, a lot of these stations, things, these programs, sorry, there's a lot of things have to happen. Because if it doesn't happen, you know, there's no ratings. You know, and that's what these shows are going for. They've these no shows are actually going, such a they're going for. It's a hard format that they use, though. They can yeah. hold the, 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 even the way that they edit them is so fucking typical and predictable that yeah. it really, really gets on my tits. I oh, I think I've got something. Listen and the thing, this. I mean, the thing that people are stupid as well because you have one camera angle right facing towards the person, and then you have another camera angle which is behind them but when you're watching the takes there's no cameraman behind them and they claim they use night no. vision when they're casting no. fucking shadows on the wall no. and everything like that yeah. no. fucking come on man <laughs> I didn't they float up the tear in a fucking water biscuit exactly you know uh, it's just, it, I, I didn't like things that insult my intelligence we, got, we went to the Rose Angle murder house so obviously STV got a hold of it they wanted to get doing an interview and things like that um, loan, I mean none known to us STV had already been in contact because there had been other paranormal companies trying to get into Rose Angle into the actual building and the guy had put up a disclaimer which I didn't, wasn't aware of at the time it was actually Stephen that phoned me and said Sean we're on STV and I'm like what are you talking about we're on STV <laughs> and he was like uh, um, the guy who owns the building saying that I've stayed in the building this length of time and you know it's not haunted, it's not haunted. and then next thing there's a link to Spirit well, it was we were classed as Team Spirit Box Danny had individual teams he had Team Spirit Box India he had different Team Spirit Boxes around the world you know all testing his technology for them uh, part of his team it's part of the genius uh, the right. development by the way Danny that is, is Danny is a open really open source we would call that oh you know? definitely no it's clever like and we, we, we t- you know we, like, we're looking at him like that's our video from you know using the PSP7 so the next thing we know we're getting interviewed they wanted us to, the, it was a Caroline McPhee from yeah. STV. She contacted me and said, Sean, could you go and phone? And I'm like that to the guys, I'm going, should I phone them back or should I not? You know, and it's like, You've got to be wary of them doing a hatchet job, though, eh? Yeah, I mean, you, you, give, you give an interview, and at the time it comes across that it's in this certain nature and that they're interested, that, but then by the time they've edited it all, they try and make you look like a bunch yeah. of fucking whack well, jobs. The comments, you know? I mean, the comments we got on our video were unbelievable. Obviously, you yeah. got your. As, we, as me and Danny calls them the, the spammers, you know, the people who come yeah. on and just type away, you know, and they're like, yeah, the you're, you're fucking fake as this and you're that. Ah, the trolls. And I'm, I'm like, we know, we look, we know doing these videos, you know, for the benefit of you, we're, we're capturing what we're capturing. Aye. We're putting it online, you can take it whatever way you want it. You, oh, don't you, have, you need a thick skin online. Yeah, you you yeah. don't have to believe what you're seeing or what you're hearing. I mean, we're recording it, we're not editing it, we're just putting it online. Aye. You can take it whatever way you want. Everybody's not going to be into, you know, ghosts and things like that. Or spirit or so everyone's got the choice to yeah. change it. If, you're, if you're going, it. you don't want it, switch it off. Switch it somebody off. else instead. Can you know. surely self-censorship's got to come as exactly. well. We, you, you you we started off as like a hobby. You've been sort of getting a revive in here, in here yeah. tonight, as yeah. here. Yeah. Is it worth switching the, the Echo Vox yeah. on? Vox on, Vox on, Vox on, Vox on, Vox on. Because we're now in the, the digital era as well. I mean, it's all technology based. Everybody's now in the technology area. So, our, our spirit now moving away from the old valve set radios and now moving up to the, the digital media. They've what they've got at the time. Yeah. You know, or the, the people that have been trying to investigate have only had that technology. So, that's been their only avenue yeah. at that point. But 
somebody like Danny to, to just think exactly. out of the box. I know. Okay, just like, come up with an idea and say to the guy, but, but you know, what if? You know, and uh, there's no pioneers left like that anywhere. Okay, yeah. and there's, there's a, he's a, he's a dying breed for what he's trying to do. See, and yeah. where did he find you again? Where, where did you see on YouTube. The, on YouTube. On YouTube. Now, but he actually put up a, a post saying he was looking for people to join his team. At that point, I was already, already been using an SP7. I'd be already been using that. I was already using the the, the Spirit Vox, which is the very first one before Echo Vox came out. He had the the Spirit Vox. It was just on and off A and B. It was just absolute static and noise. And I used to watch him and uh, Mr. Stephen Huff. I don't know if you've ever watched him. Aye, yeah. aye, aye. There's yeah. a lot of animosity yeah. in the paranormal field with Stephen <laughs> just now, um, but we'll not get into that. But I used to watch Danny's videos, I used to watch Stephen's videos, and that's what got me really interested in it. it was the frequency spectrum that we were using. And obviously me being in, uh, in uh, you know, ham radio and things like that, I got more into it. It was like, I was intrigued, you know, how are these able to communicate? But at that time I was still sceptical, you know, and Danny, put up his video saying like he's looking for people to come on you can actually see my video online with me actually saying Danny you know I think I've got a good communication with spirit and you know things do like you, that do you think your CB and ham radio stuff because you, you used to hear a lot of noises on the swath I think that yeah, helps. Just, there's, it, it makes you listen for things in the white noise I think it would probably train your ear for yeah. being able to listen I'm especially listening when for you noise. were using the skip because I, I mean I yeah. used that with a thousand watt burner and a thunder pole exactly. and for Medvin I was speaking to a guy in the oil platforms in the Mexican Gulf yeah. getting stuff like that exactly. but the skip had to be going the, the right way you know I mean, what I basically mean basically you're using you're using a highway in the sky as Aye. we used to call it I mean you use it as skip but the, the, the correct criteria is propagation that's the way Aye. the amateur radios call it now but the stuff and when you're adjusting the squelch on your yeah. CBs and stuff there's exactly. the, it's, it's usually right at the very end of like, what yeah. was that trying and obviously back a bit. with the skip meaning the signal comes up the signal goes down the signal so basically you're tuning your ears in to listen to when it gets to its lowest point Anybody who's never used a radio wouldn't hear it. Mm -hmm. You can still hear the conversation, what he's speaking, giving you his, like, his QSL details and yeah, things yeah. like that. You can still hear him, but somebody sitting next to him going, how can you understand what he's saying? Because you use it that much. There's a lot goes on between processing the sound when you're listening to white noise. And I think there's very few trades and very few hobbies that would tell you leaning in and listening like that. I know. That a ham radio and a sound engineer. Exactly. Probably your two. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's how a lot of the recordings when we do with Echo Fox, that's how my ears are attuned to it. I think because of my radio's background has helped me to hear the things that anybody else wouldn't hear. Yeah. You know, you're listening for a, a little blip. You know, like even we can go on an investigation somewhere and nothing happens now, right? We don't get any voices coming through, nothing at all. And you'll get the one, hello. Aye. You know, but sometimes you don't hear it because you're that yeah. focused into it. It's not until you go back home and you're listening, you're to, listening to your own recording yeah, yeah, yeah. and you're thinking, man, that, somebody right? said hello, you know what I mean? But sometimes you can listen. And then do you think sometimes, because you said you're wondering if they can actually just write that right onto the hard, right on the hard drive. So like it, you might, it might not even actually audibly happen in the room at yeah. that time. It's just that it's somehow imprinted itself onto the mm -hmm. onto the SD card into, yeah. the, into the code. Literally, again, again. It's very interesting. Like. I, mean, I mean, the only reason you can tell is because there's no echo. When we use echo vox, obviously I, I try and get the three three loops of my own voice. So if I do a test, I want to hear tests coming back three times as it's fading in the background. And how, how many films have you guys put up on YouTube since you started? <laughs> I think, well, I, I started off on my own channel. I've got about 20 channel, twenty videos on my own channel. This is when we start first, you know, getting into it. It was just basically documenting, mm -hmm. you know, with the thing. And then obviously the STV, then we end up doing our own videos. I think we've got about 40, might have about 40. I might be lying, you know. Um, but we do have, you know, videos on. on and, what, and what's the name of for, for the benefit? Of the uh, what's the name of your YouTube channel? It's Spirit Vox Paranormal. 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 Even the, the the shows that all parade themselves on the television, they all have to put this disclaimer up at the start that it's for right. entertainment purposes oh. only. Ken, yeah. I like I like the aspect that yours are not for entertainment purposes no. only. Ken, watch it and make your mind up. I mean, you yeah. know. I mean, if it's for entertainment purposes only, when we're doing recordings and you're getting someone coming through saying please help me, you know, you're like, is this entertainment, you know, how can they put that down as entertainment when someone who we, who we can't physically hear with our own ears, but we can when we're using the device, saying please help me, mm. you know, how can that be classed as entertainment, you know, it's, exactly, yeah. I mean, we won't know until we cross over, we until we cross over.
but then in effect Echovox is a modern day Ouija board yeah it totally is it works exactly so the same as a communication it's an interface it's a communication yeah, it's device you know? there's the difference between a Stephen yeah. Hawking is in a, a speech organiser kind of so that his voice comes out of a speaker to the days where there's a, there's a guy in Perth a Duncan really disabled guy he's got one of these big boards that's got all the words on it and right. if he's trying to have a conversation with you he points to the words points on his board I mean, that's essentially the difference between the two there that is it it's just a, it's just a, exactly yeah. a, just an interface it was actually Evelyn that recorded she had the, the laser grid set up on on one of the walls, it's the the, host, the old hospital wing. I went the the, the, the laser the grid. What is yeah. that? That thing that projects a stick man and that on the screen. It's, it's, no, it's, um, it's like a laser pen, but uh, you've got a cup, and what it does is it breaks the laser into hundreds of. It's got like a prism. No, it's a prism that creates in the yeah. dots and. What the, the theory is is if spirit walk in front of it, it creates a shadow. It's like a mirror trap. You know, it's yeah. just it disturbs you know, it. It disturbs yeah. the dots, and you can see if anything goes through it. You can mm. see the dots move. She actually picked up an EVP of a a young girl when because we set everything up. If we do anything like that, Neil, we'll set it up and we'll walk away from the area so we're no you know contaminating you know mm -hmm. any noise or anything in front of the camera. And you actually pick up a, a lot. It says to me like a little girl going help. Was it help me? It's something like yeah. help or help me. But she's, I mean, it sounds like she's in that room. You know, like me and you are speaking now. About four or five seconds after it, you hear a, met, a gentleman going, hey! As if to yeah, say, her off yeah. Yeah. you shouldn't be saying that, you know? And, you, and in the process of watching on the video, there's actually a flash and it looks like a, a person's face, a gentleman's face, appears on the camera and it's it's gone as quick as it's there, you know? Yeah. So that says they are really aware of you being there. Oh, exactly. Oh, yeah. And not just that, that there's some sort of a collective consciousness where there's rules that they're about. Exactly. Oh, yeah. That they're not supposed to get in touch no. with you. From what? Well, from what? So that's, I mean, that, that almost suggests that they follow some sort of a code. Yeah. Yeah. Can, that's I'm, like, I'm on the other side of the I'm a complete atheist. Okay? I'm, yeah, I'm, that's I'm like not me. even agnostic. I'm complete atheist. That's like, like me. I believe in and nothing. My, my pagan in, in me makes me respect forces, like mm -hmm. the forces of nature. Again, I, I believe that a life force, mm -hmm. right? And if you believe in the concept of there being a life force rather than a purpose, mm -hmm. right, it lends exactly into there being residuals through the life force. Yeah. Okay? That, that life force is something else other than the biological vessel that is walking about in, yeah. at the time. I've done a lot of reading about collective consciousness, mm -hmm. where I believe that not all of our memories are actually stored in our own minds and in our own I memory. Believe I believe else. that there is a collective consciousness that yeah. we can all draw on. I believe that's where deja vu actually comes yeah. from. That someone else has been there and you're yeah. getting that. And yeah. I, I actually do believe that not all your own memories are retained within your biological body. Yeah. Yeah. I do believe somewhat's there. And it's to be, like like nowadays, nobody has their music in their house, apart from me, obviously. Yeah. But everyone keeps their music on the cloud. Right, yeah, exactly. and I believe it's, there's a similarity to that, okay, yeah. where everyone can draw through this cloud, yeah. right? And I believe consciousness, and I believe a lot of knowledge that we have, and a lot of residual memories, and especially stuff like deja vu. I believe yeah. totally that that's where that comes from. So if there's a collective consciousness, you guys are actually have found some way, and it is back to this device, yeah. okay? And it's it's, it's, it's the deal breaker. That. It's the yeah. fucking deal breaker because it is one of these things that actually taps into that. Yeah. And I, and I actually buy into that as a theory because I believe in collective consciousness. Exactly. Don't believe in God, no. don't believe in ghosts, but I do believe in a collective consciousness. And even if you guys are tapping into that, even if it's not spirits, even if it's not the, the souls or people that are no longer with us, mm -hmm. right? I believe it's something to do with collective consciousness. I, I I'm mean, not saying that souls and, and spirits for, for, for dead people don't exist. I, I would believe that if they did exist, that would be the very realm that they would exist in. They would exist in. They would exist in. Well, you are listening to We Neil's Ghost Adventures on Blood Knot Radio, and that was my amazing interview with Spirit Vox Paranormal Dundee with Sean and the guys when they came through to the studio. Uh, a really frank interview, and a, a really butch bunch of manly men. I deliberately left in the parts about them, someone coming back from Iraq. Sean himself's a doorman, a bouncer in a, a, a club in Perth as well. So they're not the kind of guys that are, how can we say, they're not wussies, right? They're, they're quite manly men. And to look at them, you would think a very unlikely bunch of guys to go into this as a field of research. Goodbye. We'll be back next week. I'm not pushing my luck.
Amazing. Well, thanks very much, guys. Thank that was you. amazing. Yeah, Appreciate that. Yeah. Thanks for having me. And them. just the first of many, I hope. Definitely. Definitely. Thanks. Well, that was my very, very first experience with the Echo Vox device, courtesy of Sean, Stevie, and Daryl, who kindly came through to the studio. I met up with them in the town one night and brought them out here. We sat and had a good blather. That we, we we sat and chatted for about four hours. I really got to know the guys pretty well and you, you, it's only through spending time with them that you realise how genuine they, they actually are. I have deliberately kept this programme separate from my usual Halloween shenanigans because I know there's a lot of piss taking goes on, there's a lot of poking fun at everything and this year I actually did go mental because I had a great big documentary about Alistair Crowley as well so I was dabbling with all sorts of dark stuff, I had an interview with the people from the Church of Satan and everything. So, I mean, for for the the people that thought I may have been poking fun at the paranormal team, I, I, I deliberately kept this programme completely and utterly separate to let you know, hand on my heart, that this device has me more than intrigued. It has me questioning all sorts of things about my own belief structure. I've experimented myself, I've done a few sessions here in the house since I met the guys as well, and it further really has, has it just it, it, it's given me far more questions now than I ever had answers to before where I thought a lot of things were quite cut and dried I'm questioning quite a bit about that now so I have done a few sessions with a few friends here in the house as well and they have been equally amazed I've got to say there was one session in particular with a couple of close friends where they rattled off the child's names and, and everyone that was in the room and to be honest, it's not one of your, it's not a common name one of the sons has, it's either, it's, it's quite an unusual name and the pronunciation of it even came across the exact right way. It, it, it had every one of us in the room with our hairs on our arms standing up vertical. It, it was one of these goosebump moments. There is something about this machine, right? there is no doubt about it. And for that reason, We Nils Ghost Adventures will be back. I'm going to use this as a sort of, it's not going to be a weekly show, but every time I go on an adventure, I'm going to document it and I'm going to share all my audio captures with you guys unedited. I already have a bit of a team forming behind the scenes. That I, I, I was expecting quite a bit of ridicule when I first started advertising this show. And what's actually happened is, I haven't been slated or slagged off on any of the Facebook posts at all, but no one really commenting in, on publicly on any of these posts. My Facebook Messenger, on the other hand, the private messages, I've never had so many inquiries about any show I've ever done in my life. So I, I know that there are a lot more people that give this a bit more weight and are far more intrigued by this than they would openly admit in public. And for that reason, I'll keep a lot of names out of the out of the programming. No one has to be involved that doesn't want to be involved. But I am encouraging people to join me on our adventures. So get in touch with me through Facebook. My main Facebook page is Neil Andrew Simpson, but you'll get me on the Blood Not Radio page, uh, or you'll get me on the page that is dedicated specifically to this, We Neil's Ghost Adventures. If you send me a message via that, it comes straight to my personal messenger. Uh, I'll take this opportunity to thank all the guys from Dundee very, very much for coming through. It was a brilliant night. It was really, really an eye-opener, I've got to say. And we do have something quite special in the pipeline, but I am going to keep that a little bit secret right now. So, until next time, thank you all very, very much for tuning in. Special thanks to Spirit Vox Paranormal Dundee. Check out their Facebook page. They have lots of stuff on YouTube for you to check out. Some of their video footage is absolutely incredible. I, can't, I kid you not. So, until next time, thanks very much for tuning in. Have you ever wondered if there is something after this? Do you believe in the concept of a collective consciousness? Are you a 
open-minded enough to join us as we explore the possibility. With Michael, who knows? We meals ghost adventures.